As you may know, a stalking horse in a Section 363 bankruptcy sale is a bidder who sets the floor for other bidders to bid against. In exchange, the stalking horse gets customary bid protections, such as a breakup fee and an expense reimbursement in the event the stalking horse ultimately isn't the successful bidder. I want to focus today on some of the strategic considerations around becoming a stalking horse bidder. A question I've gotten from a lot of clients once they understand this kind of unique feature of Section 363 auctions is, well, do I want to be a stalking horse bidder? What are the pros and cons? Well, there are definitely some advantages as well as some risks to serving as a stalking horse. On the plus side, you know you're going into a situation where your bid is going to be subject to higher and better offers. You're going to have to put time and money into diligencing the debtor's assets, negotiating the purchase agreement. The breakup fee and expense reimbursement can help compensate for that expenditure if you're not the winning bidder. The bid protections also give you a leg up in a competitive bidding scenario, both by potentially discouraging other bidders and giving you some extra dry powder. Here's what I mean by that. Let's say that your stocking horse bid is for $10 million. The minimum topping amount, $500,000, and the breakup fee and expense reimbursement together, 500,000. So in order to overbid your $10 million bid and trigger an auction, a competing bidder has to bid the base amount, plus the minimum overbid, plus the amount of the bid protections for a total of $11 million. Other potential bidders could well look at that and say, nope, that's too rich, they don't bid, there's no auction, and you walk away with the assets for $10 million. Or suppose someone does bid $11 million, and now that's the baseline bid going into the auction. Now remember, we said the minimum overbid amount is $500,000. So does that mean to win the next round, you need to bid $11.5 million? No, you get to credit bid your breakup fee and expense reimbursement. So you only need to bid $11 million out of pocket, plus the expense reimbursement and breakup fee, and you are now the highest bidder with a deemed bid of $11.5 million. It's like having monopoly money that you get to use at the auction. Some other potential advantages. When you become the stalking horse bidder prior to the bankruptcy filing, you often have more time for your due diligence. You'll negotiate an exclusivity or no-shot period, often one that lasts until the bankruptcy court approves the bidding procedures after the bankruptcy petition is filed. You actually negotiate those bidding procedures with the debtor, of course pushing for tight milestones and deadlines. You also get to negotiate the form of asset purchase agreement and sale order to make sure that they have the provisions in them that you want. Any competing bidder is going to have to come in and mark up your stocking horse APA and stocking horse sale order, and typically, the more they deviate from those forms, the more negatively the debtor's going to view them. This all sounds great. So what's the downside to being a stocking horse? Well, first, you're going to be locked in. A bankruptcy court generally will not approve stocking horse protections for a bid that has a diligence out or a financing contingency. That means you need to be very comfortable that you've diligenced the assets adequately and you have to have your financing lined up. You also have to be comfortable shooting in the dark to some extent at the purchase price. On the one hand, you want to bid high enough to be selected as a stocking horse, but not so high that you're overpaying for the assets. I had one situation where a client actually saved millions by deciding not to be the stocking horse. The stocking horse that the debtors did select set a floor that was a lot lower than my client's target price, and even having to overbid the base price, minimum topping amount, and bid protection amount, my client still won the auction at a purchase price that was well under its target. So sometimes it can really pay to let somebody else serve as the stocking horse. So in answer to the question, do I want to be a stocking horse bidder? I have to give the quintessential lawyer answer, it depends. It's a very facts and circumstances driven analysis. So if this is something that you're considering, it would make sense to sit down with experienced bankruptcy counsel to game out the pros and cons of your specific situation.